If you want to know the detailed specs and performance of Canon EFS 17255 and uh, Sigma's IFS 18250, then you can check Mr. Clifford's videos, which is pretty detailed. In this video, I will talk about as a Canon R7 user why I upgraded my EFS 17255 to the Sigma 18250 contemporary lens. I use Canon R7 as vlog camera. At that time, I used Canon EFS 10 to 18. Uh, for wider angle. Uh, actually, now I'm using RFS 10 to 18. I have made a video before, which means I will not need the adapter. But for cinematic purpose and for blur, so I still have a camera lens which is EFS 18 to 55 f2.8. So this is the lens. But in order to use it in Canon R7, I will still need the adapter, which results the lens will be so like this. And a few months ago, Sigma launched a 18 to 50 mm, which is this lens. So you see the difference. And actually, I am using filter. We will discuss the filter later. So if I remove the filter, the cover, and the cover for EFS, so see the difference. And if I extend it, and extend, extend. Okay. Uh, I will just uh, put the cover up. Mm. Oh, by the way, I also use Canon IFS 50 to 210 uh, lens, which it also doesn't require an uh, adapter. So my debating is I already have EFS 17 to 55. Uh, it's around uh, 1,600 CN yuan. And with the adapter, I mean, adapter, you can use it for other lens, so you don't have to calculate its price, but it will be around 100 to 700 if you are using the original Canon one. For the Sigma, it's 3600 around that, so the price is almost doubled. And uh, the EFS is also has lens stabilization wire for Sigma, it doesn't have. At that time, there are some things I want to consider, but I kind of do travel vlog. I have John and a lot of other equipments in my camera bag, so I was thinking that I'm already using IFS 10 to 18 and IFS 50 to 210. Why do I need to use the large EFA lens uh, and the adapter? As you can see, this is the size. So I finally decided, okay, I'm gonna get the Sigma. And after I get the Sigma, which although this lens doesn't have image stabilization built in, but the fact is when it pair with Canon R7, with the digital stable and Canon's body IBS, I would say I cannot really notice any difference. I mean, for like a bumping road or the plane is trying to take off, even if I use EFS with the, with the lens stable on, it is still bumpy. For the Sigma, it is kind of the same. I think in like ordinary scenario, I just need to move smoothly, just like the EFS one. I can't really notice the difference. If you want to see this camera's performance, actually the vlogs I made in the Vietnam journey, I mean besides the 10 to 18, uh, the other thing are shoot by this lens. Because I didn't bring the EFS one, it is huge, and I'm just gonna to say it. So if you're using the camera with IBS, I wouldn't worry about the Sigma contemporary lens without the image stable. And another thing to remind is I use camera bag with clips, so sometimes I will just uh, clip my camera on my chest. And uh, so this lens, it uh, works like this. Uh, it is tiny, right? But uh, if I am using the EFS, I mean before, so you see the difference. And uh, often time, because this lens has, I mean, at least uh, like a decade, so this lens is kind of, it tended to like, the lens, it is tended to be extended automatically, so uh, it is a little bit annoying. I thought about when using Sigma lens, uh, my camera bag will be lighter, but the fact is, after putting all the gears inside, I cannot notice the difference. But when you're holding the camera and with different lens in front of it, I can definitely say that uh, Sigma is much lighter because this one with adapter is almost uh, like uh, seven, eight hundred uh, gram, but this one just uh, within three hundred gram. And I mentioned about the filter, right? So, uh, for instance, this is the ND filter for the Sigma. It is tiny, right? And because this lens it actually has f two point eight. Thus, if you are having a fifteen mm filter, it can almost be used on any lens, like uh, this one, 50 to 210. Uh, this is also 55 millimeter. And for the one I'm currently using, 
It's 49 mm filter for the IFS 10 to 18, but you can buy an adapter. I bring this up because if you're using the Canon EFS right, you will need a filter size which is 70. I mean, for this lens, it's 77. Of course, you can also buy adapter ring to adapt other lens. Oftentimes, large filter is more expensive, and obviously, you don't want to adapt it in your IFS lens because mm, the filter difference is huge. So my conclusion is that if you're using the Canon R7, Although it doesn't have image stable, but the performance, I cannot notice any difference with the EFS. I mean, yes, I do notice for IFS lens, there is some wobble effects I didn't come across when I was using like EFS 10 to 18 and EFS 17 to 55. But I'm totally okay with that. Actually, I think the wobble effect, uh, it is kind of cool. Like it only happens on like fancy camera, fancy lens. Besides this image stable, although the Sigma is actually more expensive than uh, EFS, but uh, the fact is, uh, you can say it is second-hand lens, so it doesn't make any difference. And uh, if you're already having an uh, EFS 17 to 55, if your purpose is to make a video, I would strongly recommend you to update it. Because for Canon R7, it only has like two rows. I mean, you can control shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, but there's two knobs, right? You can actually use uh, this ring, you can set it as control ring, or focus ring, which is a new function for IFS lens. And in previous video about uh, IFS 10 to 18 and EFS, I mistakenly think that the MFF switch doesn't work, but the fact is, it will work if you set it correctly in camera. So with the ability to set the control ring into focus ring or ISO, now you will have three rows to adjust uh, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, so much better. And one extra tip, I actually set one customer button to switch from control ring and uh, focus ring. So when I'm doing the vlog, I will set this ring to focus ring and then switch uh, the focus to autofocus. So if I accidentally touch the control ring, it won't affect my ISO accidentally. My conclusion is that if it's the only reason you use an adapter ring is to use the EFS 17 to 55. Then for sure, you just need to buy your Sigma 18 to 50 because it is much better and much more convenient. I didn't even mention the focus sound of the EFS lens. For the price, you don't need to worry about that because you don't use it for just one time. You can actually resell this lens. And if you want to know the performance of the EFS 17 to 55, the videos which I shot before the Vietnam travel vlog, they are all shot by this lens. I mean, of course, except uh, the EFS 10 to 18. That's it for me today. I will see you guys tomorrow.